As Alan said, I'm Jeannie Truckee. I work in the development office at Alton Memorial. I have been there, it'll be 10 years in April. <coughs> Excuse me. I am a native Altonian and also a Rotarian for the Riverbend at the Riverbend uh, Club. And I've been a member there for four years, I believe. Um, I will get started right away. Um, this is not my forte, so excuse me if I'm being shaky and nervous. <laughs> so um, I noticed you, you like trivia, so we're going to, instead of me talking at you, um, we're going to have some hospital trivia. And there will be prizes. <laughs> and don't feel bad if you don't know these. Um, if, if you don't know the answers, the idea is to learn a little something because I'll explain what, what all the things are after we have the question. Does anybody know what anniversary the hospital is celebrating this year? 75. Eh. Anybody else? 90. 90. No. 100. 50. No. 76. 100. 102. 91. Higher or lower? <laughs> Give us a hint. 80. Who said 80? You win a prize. <laughs> what was it? 80. 80. Well, I'm the prize boy. Oh, yeah. Are you a golf person? Oh, golf. Golf Sure. Okay. That's true. The hospital first opened, yeah. The hospital first opened its doors on November 15, 1937, which was just last month. We had our big celebration at the hospital. And it was a dream of Mrs. Alice Cole Smith, who um, donated the property for the hospital to be put on. And the original, um, she saw a need for a new hospital because St. Anthony's and St. Joseph's were always so overcrowded. And um, of course, those were the Catholic hospitals. And uh, she got backing from the Methodist Church to uh, build the hospital. And unfortunately, she passed away before her dream could be realized. But her daughters, Eunice and Ellen, carried on her dream. and. So in 1937, the hospital was, was open for business. The second question, hospital sits on land donated by the Smith family. What was the name of the Smith family estate? Does anybody know what that property was called in the home that was up there on College Avenue? Tara. <laughs> Eunice Smith. Smith no. It was called Elm Ridge. It was a 100-acre homestead that was right there on College Avenue, and some of you may remember the big brick house that, would, that kind of sat back um, off the road. Unfortunately, it burned. Um, the, the original donation from the hospital, even though that sat on 100 acres, the original donation for the hospital was 25 acres, and um, we've made great use of all of the property that's there. Uh, Eunice Smith Home has been... Uh, <coughs> in the 60s and Glenhaven Gardens even though that's not part of the hospital is um, up on that property as well um, the Smiths primarily Miss Eunice who carried on the tradition she lived in the Elmridge home until her death in 1955 and um, I'm, I'm not doing post postmasters very well I only take um, she donated more land to the city and which consists of Rock Springs Park. That was all part of the Umridge property. Monterey Place, which is right by Eunice Smith Home, if you're familiar with it, and the land that Lovejoy School now sits on. It was originally a park and a playground, but the school was built several years ago. Third question, what internationally known company did William Elliott Smith found with his partner, Edward Levis? Last one. Who said that? It was what? Glassworks. Illinois Glass Company. Well, you're so hot, you get a hot pad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that was later known as Owens, Illinois. It started in a very small <laughs> building down on Bell Street, and it became very successful very quickly, and the plant moved to a bigger location on Broadway, which is where it was until they eventually moved and went out of business. And it, when they moved to Broadway, it was closer to the steamboat transportation on the river. And that's mainly why they wanted to move from Bell Street, because they weren't close enough to the transportation at the time. A nursing school was implemented the first year the hospital was built. And anybody guess what the cost was 
a, a three-year program in the Durson School in 1938. You said what? 150. You said 150. Yeah. Right on it. Ding 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 ding. You've won my heart. 150 dollars. 150 dollars. That in, that included six uniforms, and they had we have a. a we have a, a uniform in our history room at the hospital if you've ever been up to the hospital we have a nice little history room you should all visit it sometime um, the $150 included six uniforms 12 collars 12 aprons 12 cuffs that they wore on their sleeves these, these things are just amazing the way they were put on with all the buttons and everything um, and a pair of bandage scissors and all the necessary books the nursing school closed in 1973 after graduating 626 students over the years. And every two years now, the nursing alumni get together here in town and have a reunion. And it's just really interesting to listen to all the stories they have to tell because the dormitories for the nursing school were right there on the campus of the hospital. And so that was their world. You know, they studied and they slept in the dorms and they worked in the hospital and got hands-on training and it was pretty grueling from what we understand but they had such a bond and um, they just they just love to tell the stories so it's really interesting to hear those in the 1940s and 50s the state department of public health referred patients to the orthopedic clinic at alton memorial because of the excellent treatment children received what devastating disease caused this surge in hospital admissions? Oh, oh, yeah. <coughs> uh, Randy, Randy, Randy. <laughs> it, was, it was clearly a surrender. <laughs> uh, physiotherapist Ryan. Garth Taylor and his Just assistant Neil Bauer worked with Dr. J.J. Mira in designing equipment and therapies for treating the young patients. And they worked with the patients in groups so they wouldn't feel so isolated <coughs> from their families. And then they taught the parents how to continue the treatment once they, they got home. And a lot of those patients went on to become very successful businessmen and lawyers and, you know, had all kinds of <coughs> professions because of the help they got at Alton Memorial. Alton Memorial Health Services Foundation has a fundraising event every year for a new ambulance. What's the name of the event? Duck Plumbers yep. and... <laughs> Have no, that's a third of it. No. It's the duck pluckers, deer skinners, and fish hookers ball. <laughs> <laughs> we have it out at, um, at we have it out at Milo Farms every year, and this was our ninth year that we just had it in June. And uh, there's trap shooting. We have a quail flush championship. Uh, we have steak dinner cooked on site, there's live and silent auction, music, dancing, it's just a really, really fun event. If anybody is interested in attending, let me know. And um, it's just a wonderful event. If you'll notice, if you see the, the ambulances around town with the green and orange logo on the back, that's due to the Duck Pluckers Ball. And the camo doors, we change the camo doors every year. And um, it's just a really, really fun event if you'd like to come. What construction project is currently underway at Alton Memorial? Anybody been up there? Yeah, oh, the building B. Yes. <laughs> He's got relatives that are up there. Uh, okay. All right. A daughter. A daughter. <laughs> There's a medical office building B, which was the one built in 2011 um, as a result of the hospital's physician recruitment program and um, the building is being doubled in size and it'll be open in the spring and all of the offices are spoken for so you know there's just growth and you know just doing a lot out there Roger Templin who donated a million dollars to the hospital lived in an unusual place do you know what that was <laughs> <laughs> Our million dollar benefactor lived in an unusual place. Do you know where that was? Does anybody remember Washington Square Plaza when there was a house in the middle of the yeah. parking lot? He lived there. He sold the property to developers and with the stipulation that he would live there until he died. 
and he died in 1976 at the age of 103. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> um, left a million dollars to the hospital because he was very grateful for the uh, care that he and his sister received while they were patients at Alton Memorial. And the Templin Fund continues to provide assistance to people who want to have a career in nursing. In 2010, Alton Memorial opened an 89,000 square foot wing with 76 private patient rooms. What's the name of the new wing? Duncan Wing. Yes. Whoa, you're hot. It was named after a family that owned Duncan Foundry, if any of you remember that. And um, they donated artwork to the hospital, which was subsequently sold at, I think, something and seven, to the tune of $700,000, the artwork was worth. Wow. So if any of you have $700,000 worth of artwork that you'd like to donate, um, we'll, get, we'll name a wing after you. We'll name, a wing. name it after you. Does anybody know the name of the president of Alton Memorial? Oh, Dave Rash. Yes. <laughs> And his career as a pharmacist, and he was named president in 2007. His first experience with the hospital goes back to when he was eight years old and was admitted to the hospital with a sore throat. After a two week stay, they started talking about taking his tonsils out. He wow. got well very quickly. Mm -hmm. I will make a shameless plug, and I have a dollar. Um, we have a history book that was uh, published five years ago for our 75th anniversary, but I have those available. I'd like to present our, the president with one. Whoa! So I do have other copies, and we have sales okay. because it's five years old. You can take the um, book and your dog. So, yeah. Um, but for $15, you can buy a book. And I also brought copies of our annual report that just got mailed out about two weeks ago in case you did not receive one in the, um, in the mail. And I think that's all I have. Well, can we uh, thank Anybody Jeannie? Anybody have 